Shalom Israel. This is Will and Larry with For Israel. This lesson is about breaking down all 15 verses of Revelation chapter 20. So without further ado, let's start the lesson. Please read Revelation chapter 20 verse 1. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now who is this angel? I've heard some people say that this is Septimius Severus. This could be him. We're going to go over the original context of the scriptures with precepts, though. This verse is saying that the Lord has the power to decide which people are put in a low state. Let's use precepts to bring out the understanding. Let's get a precept for a key and bottomless pit. Please read Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Keys of hell and death in this verse mean the same thing as key of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 20 verse 1. Both verses refer to the Lord as the one that has the power. The words and a great chain in his hand in Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 is just a repeat of what was stated earlier in the verse. Let's prove it. Let's go to Mark chapter 5 and read the first four verses. Please pay attention to how the words bound with feathers and chains and the words tame him in verse four mean the same thing. Mark chapter five, verse one. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was yet come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Now let's move on to verse 2 of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. This means that the Lord put sinners in a low state while he walked the earth during the time of the Roman captivity before his death. Let's get the evidence. The words laid hold and bound him were explained with the previous verse. Now, who is the dragon? Let's find out. The dragon is the same as the old serpent, devil, and Satan that is mentioned in the same verse. A long answer to what the dragon consists of will be explained in the breakdown of Revelation chapter 12 in another video or series of videos about just chapter 12. Let's give the short answer by giving scriptures that get to the point. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 reveals that Satan consists of lies. Let's read the precept. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. John chapter 8 verse 44 reveals that the devil also consists of lies. Satan and the devil are the same. Let's get the precept. John chapter 8 verse 44. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Guess what the old serpent is referring to according to the precept? You guessed it. More lies is the correct answer. Let's get the verse that proves this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The dragon is referring to lies too. People that aren't keeping the laws are in the shadow of death. Let's get the evidence. Psalm 44, verse 19. Though thou hast sore broken us in places of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. Psalm 107, verse 10 and 11. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction, and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God, 
and contemn the counsel of the Most High. Now the dragon was bound a thousand years. The thousand years is only referring to the time that Christ taught Israelites before his crucifixion. Let's get some proof. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. This proves that spending time with the Lord is like a thousand years. Let's read the next verse to get more understanding about the thousand years. Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. This verse says that the dragon was bound for a thousand years should be fulfilled. Let's focus on the word fulfilled. This is a clue that proves that once Christ did everything that he was prophesied to do while living on earth, that the thousand years, which is the time that believers spent with Christ during his life, ended. Please read one of the precepts from Matthew chapter 5. Everyone remember to pay attention to the meaning of the variations of the word fulfilled in the two verses that we are about to read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, so heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now let's get further proof. Luke chapter 24, verse 44 through 47. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer as to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Now the first part of Revelation chapter 20 verse 3 repeats the same thing four times. The words bottomless pit, shut him up, set a seal upon him, and he should deceive the nations no more, are all referring to unrighteous teachers not being allowed to incorrectly teach the Bible. We already proved what the bottomless pit means, so let's move on. Let's get a precept for the words shut him up. Romans 3 and 19. Now we know that what things soever the law said, is said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Animal sacrifice can't save anyone. Only Christ can save believers. For understanding about Romans chapter 3, verse 19, please watch our video that is titled, Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Iniquity needs to shut its mouth. Let's get a precept or set a seal upon him. Please read Revelation chapter 5, verses 2 and 4. Opening and reading the book is the same thing as removing seals from the book. Both are referring to teaching the Bible correctly. Now let's get the precept. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Let's read a little about how the devil deceived the nations. Let's read the verse that reveals how the nations were deceived. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. The miracles are lies according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. This is a good plug to promote our series on the breakdown of all 51 verses of Matthew chapter 24 that we have in a playlist. Please check it out when you have time. 
This is also referring to the mark of the beast. We have a video about that too. Please watch it also. We are going to make this understanding that easy to obtain. We are following the Lord's way of teaching by going precept upon precept, by going video upon video. Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 20 verse 3 and read the last part of it again. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Our Matthew chapter 24 series also breaks down what this means with the breakdown of Matthew chapter 24 verse 22. We are going to just give you the answer. It is talking about wicked teachers being allowed to teach for a short period of time after the death of Christ. Now let's get some clarity on Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now let's read the first part of the verse again. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. This is referring to the disciples teaching the word of God in leadership positions before and after Christ's resurrection. Let's get a symbol to the use of variations of the words judgment and thrones to get clarity. Matthew chapter 19 verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Thrones and judgment are referring to leadership. Now let's deal with the next part of Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. Please read the middle part again. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Now, with word of God and witness of Jesus is referring to keeping the commandments. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 and 13 prove this. Now the next part of Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 mentions the opposite of the word of God and witness of Jesus. The opposite or adversary, also known as Satan, is sin. Let's read the excerpt. In which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. All of this is referring to sin. Please review our Mark of the Beast video for more details. Let's read the last part of Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. A lot of teachers refer to this time period as a literal 1,000 years that saints will spend with ruling with the Lord in the future. This could be true, but once again, we're going to use precepts to get understanding. Living and reigning with Christ thousand years is the same thing as sitting upon thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We explained that with the first part of this verse and at the beginning of this lesson. Satan was bound a thousand years by Christ and the disciples by teaching the Bible correctly. Now let's explain Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Let's read a similar to Matthew chapter 27, 52 and 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of them, excuse me, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. The graves in Matthew chapter 27 is referring to the dead. Revelation chapter 20. People that don't understand the scriptures are dead, according to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Matthew chapter 27, verse 53, reveals that the graves were open for people received understanding after Christ's resurrection. Revelation chapter 20, verse 5, refers to this as the first resurrection. Let's get some scriptures for verification. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death,
by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Let's stop the first video of this series right there and pick up with Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 in part 2. If you like this content, please like and subscribe to receive notifications when we upload the next parts of this series. Sirach chapter 33 verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Shalom. Shalom.